What's going on, guys? We are live. Welcome to the Vip Night with the Rhino and Friends. As always, we have Mike Mead, Bill Cooper, Robert Riggin. Today's guest is Chris, uh, homeboy Chris uh, from uh, Mr. Coils over here. He's making some banging coils and he's getting some nice, uh, some nice hit. So, hold on a second. I got a little uh, vape out over here. Okay. Uh, we have Dimitri coming in very soon. He just had to step out for a little bit, and um, we'll have him back on over here. We have some exciting news over here, the nice things that have been happening during the week. Uh, but first of all, we like to do a little uh, buffet. Cooper, you'll start off the buffet this week because you always get left out. Nah, it's all good. Uh, I'm only I'm running a couple cheapies. Uh, my drag X. I got uh, Chris Krogstad's uh, Looper in there, which is very good, super sweet, but really good. Uh, my Shift Plus with the MR on top, uh, running my Sugar Flakes on that, and I got my Two-Face Mod, which is the Mission on one side, Cheapy on the other. That has uh, Apple Jacks by Ethan Windsor in it, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll pass it on to Mr. Robert Riggin. All right. I got the uh, Boxer Classic 100C with the uh, Doom X. Uh, I'm running some stainless steel mesh in there. And then I got my Mach 1 on my doorstop. <laughs> and I got the Siegfried on the Rhino Mech. And uh, I got, oh, what juice do I got on those? Um, Krula um, and Elite. Is what I got between them. So I'm on a I'm on a donut kick again. Pass it on, pass it on, brother. All right, Mike. We know it's going to be short and sweet, right? Um, two. Rocking the Paramour with the MR. My Iron Man setup. Yeah. And of course. Widowmaker with Apple Chris or Chris Sager. Go ahead, uh, Chris. All right, so what I got is the Suicide, the Fatality 28 with a set of my back shots, and I'm vaping on the Kaiser Rispies. <laughs> the nice. big bottle. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I guess I'm left over here. What you doing? Uh, I just got this little guy in, finally. Ooh, bomb. bomb. Yeah. Rocking nice. it with a knocker on here. And I got some uh, Exo Brandy in there. I got the, the Matador. Oh, the hell yeah. Floor. I got Kais Rispies in that one. And I got some Crawler and uh, Vulcan. With the that's, a beautiful, that's a beautiful mod. It really is. It really is. He did a fantastic job with this. I'm, I'm yeah, really Victor's a beast. Fun. I mean, you know what? Let me tell you. It's it shows every penny of workmanship. I tell you that right now. Yeah, it does. No lie. Every fucking penny. Of yeah, workmanship. Victor. Victor's a fucking artist. He really. And is. he's a very nice guy. On top yeah. of that, he's a very very nice guy. Uh, I, I had a, an opportunity to chat with him and I introduced myself and uh, he was like, man, he goes, I saw your tomorrow. He goes, that thing is sick. He goes, very nice. Uh, he goes, very, you know, it was very, in, 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 a lot of ingenuity going on in there. But, uh, and then we just started talking about family stuff because uh, I guess he's got some uh, couple of kids and stuff like that. And, um, you know, one of them he has to keep an eye on because he's a, he's a little bit, I'm like, well, they're all like that, you know, but uh, anyway, he's a very nice guy. Very, very nice guy. Oh, and I forgot. I also have my Labrys over here with a GT4 nice. short stack on it. Nice. And a nice little tilt fire with some four millimeter zappers. <laughs> Wait till you get those, Cooper. They're going to fucking love those bastards. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna throw one in the MR probably uh, in the next day or two when I do the review for the uh, cryptid tab. Why not? So who's in the house? Let's see. Should we do an early shout out to the group? Why not? Yeah, right? yeah. It seems we're oh, like rocking and rolling Coach earlier and earlier. Now. Roy Gordine, Alan Saylor, what's going on? Caitlin, how you doing? Did you get your wrench, Caitlin? Yes, she did. 
We got thir uh, we got 13 yeah. likes and 19 watching. That's not bad. Yeah. Mitch Kondo, what's going on? Terry, how's it going? The Russian is in the chat. Right there you go. Frank Rizzo, what's going on? Devin Wilson, how you been, brother? Man, you've been quiet. I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope all is good, my friend. Cody King, what's going on? Black Rose, Minor, how's it going, buddy? Jerry Frisbee, Gumo, how's it going? Adam Ortega, how's it going, brother? Oh, you guys got some juice coming. Doc Venom, how's it going? Dave Sorrow, what's going on? Hunter McDonald, how's it going? Did I miss anybody? Nope. I think I Chris Nossler, how's it going, Chris? Yeah, buddy. Well, thank you guys always for showing up. And uh, let's see, who else is in here? I, I do have a subject to start the night off. Go ahead, my brother. Um, because there's a lot of people in the chat, and I do want to bring this up. And it was it, it it's a good subject, and it's something that everybody in the vape community should be aware of. Um, so Mr. Gumo in the chat, he he got twisted up, and I feel really bad. He got hung out to dry hard on a buy sell trade deal. And I saw that. So I'm 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 basically warning everybody that's in the chat or watching the show or even the people who are watching it later on after the recording's done. Um, just be real careful when you buy sell trade, even if you know somebody. Be real careful. You know, yeah, I can I can attest to that one. Yeah, get your vouches. Make sure stuff's live. Don't take pictures of vouches. Don't take their word for it. You know, and and I know it costs a little bit extra, but don't send it friends and family anymore. You know what? Because Gumo got screwed by somebody that's been in the vape community for a while. And we've seen this guy around multiple times in different groups. And you know what? It's it's send it business. Don't don't fool around anymore. You know what? Send it, send it as if you're buying something from a vendor. Don't do friends and family anymore because if they do screw you, you have a way to get your money back. Do it Zell. Do try and do something different because the problem uh, is Zell Zell doesn't protect fraudulent purchases. Oh, Zell doesn't protect anymore? No. Well, I guess they I guess they didn't um or haven't at all. Oh, I thought they did actually. That's I what I figured about. too, because a lot of banks have it like built into their app to send send it that way, but um guess any transactions uh, done over Zelle, unless it's with the credit card, um, you don't really have any recourse for getting those funds back. Yeah. I mean, I know there's people that we all know and we all trust. And I've been screwed by someone. I got screwed by someone hard. Um, I was one of the guys who got caught. Well, you know the, what? Uh, it's one thing when you get screwed like from a person to person. It's another thing when you get screwed from a fucking reputable company. That's even worse. Correct. Which correct. is what happened. I got, me, screwed, I got screwed on that uh the the wicked group by with uh Alan Richter or Alan Richter. And that was that was that hurt because me and Alan had been friends. I talked to him many times, and I was on that group that got screwed. So yeah, it does happen and there are people and I know there's people in, in the vape community that we all say, you know, they're down to earth, they're good people. But you know what? You don't know them but through a screen. You know, don't trust anybody. Fuck that. No, you know? I mean, unless you've done business with them before. And even, oh, though, even if you have had instances like with uh, what's his name over there? Louis Nicolette. No, no, well, him too, yes. But the other guy, uh, what was it? Uh, Chris or something? What was his name? Uh, I know you know him. Big guy. He was trying to sell juice at one time that he was buying him by the gallons and said he made it himself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was he was in my neck of the woods, uh, Port Angeles area. Um, I can't uh, Ke right Kevin, Kevin yep. uh, Kaner. Kaner. Kaner, Kevin right? Kaner, yep. Yep. I mean, yeah, and he's, he's very, very juice. reputable. I had done business with him, and I had flawless transaction until something happened in the end. Look but, at what you know, happened with uh, – who was the guy who was with Daniel Daly for the longest time? Yeah, him too. He screwed a lot of people. And Daniel Danny made hard. good. On that. Daniel Danny made good on that. I gotta say. Yes, Daniel did. Daniel took it on himself and made good on that. Yes, he did. Um, I was one of the people who pitched in on the people who were screwed on the wicked group by. Um, I pitched in. I actually donated two mods towards that raffle to pay the bill for everybody who got screwed on that group by. So it's it's 
Yeah, it's so basically it's like a public service announcement telling all you guys that if yes, buy sell trade, there are some awesome deals out there. Not so much lately. Everybody's been wanting like really top dollar for their shit, which has been really weird. But protect your ass. Um yeah, not the Squonk America group. It's the group called We Are America. It's their right. buy-sell trade group. Right. Um, but let, let me add this, though. Uh, go ahead. Because, and, and I'm not trying to be like the dick over here. In Gumo's no. case, I believe, and correct Gumo, correct me if I'm wrong with this, because I just got this from reading the post. In Gumo's case, I believe Gumo received the Skyfall, but there was something wrong with the Skyfall. Oh, it was trashed. It was Okay, okay hold on. Grid. All right, so, and Gumo says, you know, this thing is trash. The guy, like, was apologetic. He goes, you know, don't worry about it. Just send it back or whatever. I'll refund you. And then went dead, went silent. Never answered him back or, I guess, never refunded the money. But nope. in this case, and, and I'm, this is not to be, I'm not justifying it. In this case, at least he got something. You know what I'm trying oh, to yeah. say? It's trash. Yes, it's probably worth nothing. I guess, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't seen the Addy. I think what Gumo should have done is he should have posted the pictures up Showing the quality did. that I didn't see the pictures. Oh, oh, no, he no, might have. No. He might have later on. No, he no, later no. On. He did I later on. The but the guy who the guy who took the pictures of the Addy for Gumo, he only took pictures of it with the metal cap on it. That was it. It no, was no, I'm saying Gumo should have put posted the pictures of how he received it. He did. He did. He did? Okay, yeah. good. Because that that part I missed for sure. And Gumo, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not putting your business out there. Gumo did finally, you know, I told him right away, dude, vape court right away. Don't don't fool around. And I know, but you know what? That's a joke, man. What are they gonna? It is do? now. It is. What are they gonna do? Fucking electronic fucking handcuffs. I mean, come yeah. on. That's such a fucking joke. Well, he's been he's been removed. He was in the Squonk Life group. I that's removed the, that guy the out of there. Thing. I mean, the best thing to do is get. Get it, get it in touch with like uh, moderators, you know. I mean, especially like Gumo, he's pretty well known. And say, hey guys, here's, you know, yeah, you know, you're a moderator of this group. If you have this guy in here, well, just fucking throw him out. And yeah, that's where all no, the on the contrary, I, I understand that. Now there was a guy that was trading in a group that I was an admin from, and he was doing good trades and clean trades, and he didn't scam anybody. He was just hated by a bunch of the groups. Because he was buying wholesale stuff and then flipping them in on Facebook. Yeah. And I got actually messaged from a guy named Don Ward, who was an admin of another group, and he's ordering me to kick him out of my group. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. He hasn't broken any he rules. He hasn't done anything to me. And he hasn't ripped anybody off. Right. Just because he's selling wholesale goods at a dirt cheap price. I hate him or love him, whatever. The kid was a dick. He really was. But I've made deals with him. You also time. have the other guys who buy stuff at wholesale price and then flip it in waffles. Right. You know? I think Chris on boy's screen is frozen. No, nah, he's just staring. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Uh, the way, he the was, way it is he was in a deep thought just... over there for a few minutes. <laughs> All right, I have a topic tonight, too, that I wanted to bring up. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump your chip. I there. agree, Damien. Oh no, you're good. I definitely uh, agree, brother. I think vape court is a fucking joke. You know what I'm saying? It, it, if anything should really be done. If somebody vape, screws well, like that, like wait a all, second, like a in all fairness, screws, I think that it should be brought to the attentions of all the 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 uh, groups and say, hey. I'm just putting this out there. This is what happened. But that's how a lot of people. Happen. Yeah, but that's how I heard. A lot of the I, I saw. I saw Jonathan Higgins, which is super. He's he's like super active in the um, Narmods group, and uh, he got screwed by Louis Nicolette. Like he said, he had just. And I messaged him. I was like, "Yeah." Um, he's like, "Well, I just did a deal with him, and everything went fine, and then this one fell through." I was like, "Yeah, that was the same thing with me. We we did a couple yeah. of deals. They went through fine, and then." But let me play devil's advocate. Like Mike said, he hasn't screwed anybody in your group. But are you waiting for him to screw somebody in your group? Number one. That's why you make And that's number why two, you wait, before you answer, number two, like Dom said, you're better off letting all the other individual mods know. But that's how Vape Court works. A lot of us, like in Squonk Life, I check the Vape Court wall. So that's how if like if Gumo got screwed and he goes to vape court and they find in favor of Gumo, they say, yeah, he got screwed. This guy's fucking scamming. No, so. 
that's how I find out who's in my group that's scamming. So I get rid of them. Yeah. So it's in a, in a sense by going to yeah. a court, you are letting all the other moderators and admins know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I I guess, brother, I just still think it's a joke. You know what I'm saying? That's just my personal opinion, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm lucky enough to say that I have never been screwed so far. I've done quite a few deals, so I feel for the people who have got screwed because there's really no way to get it back. I got screwed by a local personal friend who is actually an owner of another juice company. I've seen Mike get screwed so many times. I'm oh, surprised yeah. his ass don't look like the Lincoln Tunnel. Five hundred dollars <laughs> get screwed so many times. This asshole is so fucking big right now. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> so anyway, what, what I wanted to bring up is the the notorious vape mail ban. Oh yeah, I heard. I heard. Okay, I think I know. So, I think I know where you're going. This vape mail ban has been put on hold. But they have not. Yeah, but it doesn't stop UPS from saying no. Anything. So we are still allowed to ship. No, you shouldn't let it slide, Guma. No, I'm not saying to let it slide. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe the guy will come around and we'll send you your money. But uh, I guess uh, you know. I hope I hope you didn't lose much. But uh, in, in oh, the end, it was though, a sky fall. What? It was a sky fall. It don't matter. Those sky falls just started going back up now, man. But back in the day, you could have picked one up for a buck forty or a buck sixty. All of a sudden, I start seeing them past two hundred again. I'm like, why? You know? Yeah. So, Supply and demand. Yeah, I know. But I mean, like. I, I, I don't get it. You know, I mean, I had, I had two of them at one point, and I got rid of them. Hey, Mac, you said I like to yeah, watch. I got, yeah, I got burned I'm on a skyfall, too, that. but I just didn't get it. <laughs> I don't like watching it, but as long as I'm not receiving it, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's take it to, to our guest today. Uh, Chris, what do you want to do? What do you want to talk about about your calls? I know you've been uh, really busy lately, so tell us what's been going on with you. What's I've going been on, Mike? How are you? Extremely busy here lately. Uh, just kind of making moves, trying to get my name out there and get myself into shops around the country. i just uh, working out a deal in Florida and Connecticut right now. So, um, other than that, right now, I'm all caught up on stock. So, what I like to do when that happens is I like to make a limited edition set of coals. Um they're a little bit more than my regular coals, but the, you know, it's a limited stock. And once I'm done making them, I'm done making them. Uh, right now, I have some frame staple aliens that are going up, Ooh. and I've been extremely busy with those. I've sold at least 20 so far, and I got at least another 20 to make. Things have been what's going your, great. What's your ohms at on the, the framed? 0.07. Right on. Actually, right. Uh, I'm using them right now on a dead-ass battery, but I mean, let's see, there we go. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, they're great. That's fucking rowdy. And for uh, for days, I know we and mentioned this uh, last week, uh, we're getting uh, Chris to make some coils for the Mach 1. So he's going to make some specialty with those. So uh, I, I ordered like uh, 10 sets to start off with. So if anyone is interested, they could always hit me up and... Uh, We'll get them to you. So according to Chris, he's only making those for the Mach 1. Yeah, those are exclusive to the Mach 1. Uh, still kind of working things out, but uh, they're going to be nice. Uh, it's going to be good and presentable, and I think everybody's going to like the way it all works out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna commission Chris. I'm gonna commission Chris to make me. I, I had a set of coils from Dwayne Rambo, and I missed them. They were so good, flavor bombs. Uh, staggered staple frame clapton. Those, Ooh, were... those are difficult, man. That's like some pretty complex stuff. I'm in the process of uh, learning stag. Yeah, he I've charged been, me uh, twenty five dollars. I use uh, own boy Chris's method when I make my uh, staggered cores. Or yeah, I guess they technically end up being cores. 
What's the method? Um, so you just, whatever the wrap is going to be, the spacing, um, so you just use a, a lure, a weighted lure, and uh, that line, and you hang it, and then you just wrap your core wire and, uh, behind it, and um, it leaves uh, leaves that spacing as you go up the wire. Nice. Oh, He's got a whole video on on it. Makes it real easy. Right on. Yeah, I what have I've to been doing is uh, Dwayne Rambo's way, where you use like a craftsman clamp. I've been having really good luck with that, and I'm hoping to bring uh, something special here soon. Uh, I always find it fascinating uh, when uh, when people make coils and the designs they come up with, and some of them are like really intricate and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I, I never got into it, and I don't think I, I, I would want to. The mohawks and the sukas are fun. crazy. I don't know how people do those well, things. The mohawks? Yeah. yeah, mohawks and the suka coils, like they're mohawks clapped they're... in with ribbon. Mohawks, when they're done right, the coil just as much juice as the cotton does. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, the only the mohawks I ever tried were from uh, Trey Palmer from Backwoods Coils. And those looked really, really nice. Jay made it. <laughs> What's going on, Jay? How's it going? What's up, Jay? What's up, Micah? Glad to see y'all tuning in. Oh. Yeah, Jerry, you could be our friend. Don't worry about it. Just blend right in. Blend. Blend. Glenn, don't forget to make comments. And we don't talk to anybody who don't hit that fucking like button. <laughs> and Jerry, you don't want to be your friend. Jay, you want to be my friend. Fuck that. He's been he's been doing some waffles. I know Mike has been doing some uh, waffles. And well, stuff. Corey Panda actually has been doing them for me. Oh, okay. He's been running a lot of them in the group lately. Right on. You got assistance. You see, I got nobody. I got to do everything myself. Yeah. Well, I got a lot on my plate that I'm trying to narrow down here. Uh, you got He's over 800 in the Philippines Collision Group. Fantastic, Terry. That's good to hear. We awesome. just got done back stocking over 800 bottles of juice today, so our back stock is sitting pretty, pretty hefty at the moment, and it'll be good. I know, so you're uh, talking about the vape now, then, Mike. How has that, that affected your business? Huh? You were talking about the vape mail ban earlier. How has that affected your business since you own a shop? Um. Well, shipping products from distributors has been a little bit of an annoyance because my business is actually registered to my home address, and they want to ship the products exactly to where my business or my business license is drawn from. And I'm arguing with them about that. So distribu distribution has been a little bit of a pain in the ass. But as for products being shipped out, well, they don't ship through my business anyway. They ship through a separate business. Currently, I'm still shipping. Uh, the only concern I have is possibly being blacklisted. And I don't know if you guys know what that is, but they basically take your address and that's it. They kill it. Yeah, they won't they won't send or receive anything to that address. Um now right now with the the ban has been put on hold. So everybody's still good. But what I recommend is don't ship it from a vape name company. No, don't put a vape ship name it from company. Something out. that has nothing to do with vape. They'll tear it open. I, I actually own another business that does a different type of product. And I've just been shipping through that. Uh, luckily, when I started my business, I didn't put my business name, Homeboy Coles or Homeboy Chris 270. I'm actually CBHBC LLC, uh, Premium Wire Art. There you go. That's Getting the way fancy with those names, man. There you go. Hey, that's the way to do it. Got to protect yourself. Oh, I know. You got you got to do it. So let's give a couple of shout outs. Oh, yeah. So we have Dave Sorrow in the house. We got uh, Dave Sorrow is the one uh, who was responsible for the Cerakoting on the Mach 1, by the way, guys. Uh, he did a wonderful job. Thank you very much, Dave. 
Uh, Dave is also going to be doing some seracoding on some uh, PA12 mods or MJF mods, which are 3D printed mods. So uh, he's figured that how to do that, and it's going to look fa fantastic. Uh, he's got a couple of samples from uh, Mike and myself. So hopefully when uh, those come in, um, we'll show those off. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get a Babetrola done and uh, seracoded. Uh, on top of that, we have Damien Doyle, who's uh, Underground Flavors. If you guys uh, don't know him, uh, you probably all do know him in here. But uh, give him a shout and uh, let him uh, uh, try some of his juices. I, I've tried the Elite and the uh, Low Key, which were fantastic. Oh, low Key is good. I yeah, really want to try some of that. Yeah, we also have Jay Bapes in the house. He's another juice maker. And uh, he just got up and running again because his site got shut down but i think he's right back he's right back up to normal again so uh give him a little shout out of course we got homeboy chris so he has a guest making coils you guys you know always uh if you are needing some coils give him a shout and uh get yourself some coils man try them out hey uh, anybody? robert um, yeah what's the flavor profile on that loki it is um it's lime it's a lot it's, yeah it's a lime Cream, nope. yeah, lime cream pie. Yeah, lime cream pie, key lime cream pie. Yeah, that's one of those. That's one of those. I have to be in the mood for it. Have to be in the mood for it, so I can't keep that like in a tank at all times. Don't do it, the main vapor. Don't do it. What's he doing? <laughs> He's moving into a, a new apartment with his. Oh uh, no, no, no fucking around. As soon as you put her name on the lease, the crazy comes out. <laughs> uh, I might have to try it. Shit gonna change on you. You'll see. Doc, no, the bastard berry is very good, actually. I'll always remember one thing. The I nerve, right the nerve that causes... <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried the bastard berry yet. Yep. Yeah. Josh, Doc Venom. He can go through easily a 500 mil of, of bastard berry in a couple weeks. 500 really? of that and a 500 of grape. Six Damn. minutes. Right on. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see somebody do. I want a flavor. I got a flavor, but nobody does it. I want a raspberry filled powdered donut. Yeah, the powder is that's that, that going to be that's going to be the the powder is going to be the so Wayne Wayne actually just did a ras like nailed a raspberry donut a couple weeks back pretty simple recipe um, I don't know how well you could add the powdered aspect to it though even if you did like because I've had the ones where the raspberry donuts the raspberry filled donuts where it's powdered and where it's sugared. They're both good. Yeah. It's just a good raspberry jelly. I would, oh my God. Well, I know that uh, my, I just ordered some concentrates from Medicine Flower and I got, uh, I, I got a couple of few of them, but uh, in the cherry vanilla recipe, I substituted and I used the Medicine Flower, which, you know, with that thing, you got to use like 0.01%. You yeah. Because it's so fucking concentrated. But man, it just gave it a nice aroma. I mean, and uh, I can't wait till the people that try the the cherry vanilla that they ordered, because they're gonna be in for a surprise. I mean, it is aromatic. Well, I tried it. I'm gonna give you the something. The medicine flower is really, really good, but man, it's fucking super expensive. But I guess you know you don't have to use as much, so maybe in the end it, it turns out to be the same. But yeah. it is a very, very good product. So I, I tried a vape juice a while ago. Actually, it was a line of vape juices, and it was a small little hole-in-the-wall company. I saw them at the Vegas Vape Convention a couple of years ago. And they had a juice, and I was like, ew, no, there's no way. I'm not trying that. And the lady was like, try it. Trust me. And I was like, okay. It was orange hibiscus. They use flour like actual flower aromas in their juice. One was a uh, lab uh, orange hibiscus, mint lavender. Dude, they were really fucking good. Oh yeah, I they do that with the, they disappeared. I don't know where to find them. You know who does that with the with the boba tea is that um 
serve your vape? Save your vape? Yeah. yeah. They do the boba line and they do a jasmine tea and they use, you know, jasmine uh, flower extract. And, yeah. and it's really fucking good. It really is good. Yeah, I actually find that because the the I had a bottle of the orange hibiscus, and the funny thing is, when I vaped it, it was the most relaxed I had ever been. It was just it was just one of those that you just laid back, watch TV, and vape. That was it. It was, it was so a chill vape. Yeah. Right on. All right, Mike, show off this fucking stab mod that you've been working oh, on. Oh, that pretty ass mod, dick. Yeah, let's see that. <laughs> I had to show it off. Uh, Fox Elder Burl dyed black, stab wood. It's got and a two so clear on it. I haven't wet sanded or polished it yet. But that still looks good. It's yeah, heavy, no, you can probably heavy, let it go right road. now. Dude, it's that is so good. Road. Balanced. Nice. That right there, I guarantee you have a new process for you post for pictures of that as is, and there's gonna be a fight for that mod. When's the waffle going up? Gumo, serve your vape coconut cream. That's the balanced, and that is my all all time favorite. And I've been trying to replicate that, and uh, I've not come close to it. But yes, that is uh, one of the one of my favorite coconut uh, e juices ever. Uh, is that the one that you put it up on waffle, uh, Mike? Um. I did have one person request that body, but I don't know how serious they are at putting out the money. Um, you, you know we are, we are going to be putting this one up for Waffle. The I've joker. already done a polish job on this one. <clears throat> this one will be going up for Waffle this week sometime. It's 21700 trucker mod. I have to get it assembled. <sighs> um, Sorry. And then we'll see. I've got a couple. I, well, I've got a whole shelf full of these that we're gonna start getting cleared and sanded. I've already got one sitting <laughs> on there. Like I said earlier, we've been doing. We did a lot of uh, juice backstocking, our uh, backstock bins. So um, getting Chris, prep, you know, not have to worry about the juice. So this week is all hardcore, straightforward mob building. Um, getting some of these pro, uh, resins out there. And I've been working on the composer. I just modified my CNC so that way I can do a little bit more of the composer in-house without having to send it out. So what I'm working on is trying to do the whole composer in-house so I don't ever have to worry about sending it out. I have a block that's already trimmed up, sized up, ready to drop into the CNC pocket. I, I cut a pocket in my table that I can drop the mod into so I can come in. Set do the 510 on it. I can flip it over. I can go in and do most of the battery tube. <laughs> Problem is, is just that I don't have a bit that's going to be long enough travel for that. So um, once we get the battery tubes drilled out, I think that's going to be really, really special too. And then everything else can be milled right on my machine. I still so, think you should put that fucking waffle up that of uh, that mod. The I'm looking. One? I don't see my mod up on that shelf because I know he's working on it. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> now it's yeah. got a deer wax on it. <laughs> hey, it's got to go wax off somehow. Off face. No, I got to give I it up to you, modders. You guys make some innovative, beautiful shit. It's incredible. Thank you. I've got some really nice blocks sitting in um, cactus juice. Now, we have not done a vape shop diary in a while. I know Dom's been asking about it, and, and we've been wanting to do some more vape shop diaries. I would like to actually start putting them on YouTube and having them set to a YouTube channel for doing the shop diaries um, where it shows what we're doing, the work that we're doing. Which um, this clear coat is a really heavy duty automotive clear, Sorry. but we apply it with an airbrush. So that's right. Mike just got himself a whole new kit. Airbrush. Oh, yeah, I got a whole airbrush system with with a little um, paint yep. booth and everything. So we've been I'm testing the last it out on the mod you're making. 
Huh? On the last hand polished mod you're making? Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty much. Well, actually, Dominic's is probably going to be the last ah, hand okay. done mod. Well, I, I won't even say hand done because they're all hand done. Yeah. Um, just using the the other style of hand finished. The other style of uh, clear coating. Yeah. Right. I'm still wondering if, like, I, I, I would love to hear from someone that's probably done both and has a, a lot of years' experience, whether it's it's better to clear coat with a spray gun or just go <laughs> old school and do a CA coating. Because I have to believe that the CA coating has got to have to hold stronger. Well, it, inevitably, they can both have the same strength and, and, and resistibility. Okay. CA you generally will put on at a far thicker coat. Well, at least I do. When I CA, I use a medium coat, so I put on a far, far thicker coat. Um, but it's a lot more. Now, the 2K that we're using is basically, essentially it's the same clear coat that they put on your car that gets hit with rocks and whatever and bugs and and all of that shit at 70 miles an hour. Um, and, and using an air gun to airbrush or even a, you know, a, a professional spray gun. Spray gun just is too big and bulky. That's why I went with the, the airbrush gun. Um, it's, it's all on how you apply the coat, how you treat the coat, how you final sand the coat, polish the coat. That's what's going to make the device as durable as what it is is how you treat the coat that you actually put on there if that makes sense yeah. and i can essentially put the 2k clear on there as thick as i do the ca it's just a multitude of coats like uh this one here has four coats on it right now this was done essentially two to four coats <coughs> i put two coats on in one session I let it dry overnight. Then I go and I put on two more coats. And then I let it dry overnight. Now, are you putting them on a bench grinder wheel with the big polishing cloth and just finishing them that way? Essentially, but these are actually going to get 1,000 grit wet sanded, probably 1,000 to 1,500 wet sanded. So that way, we, if there's any type of orange peel or yeah. imperfections, we sand them out get them all pretty and smooth. Then we hit it on the buffing with a red rouge. And then we yep. hit it with a white diamond and the white diamonds, what will turn it to glass. Nice. Right That'll give it that glassy shiny. I'm going to get some paint from Ferrari. I'm going to have Dave Sorrow do me a, 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 a mod in a Ferrari color. Ooh. Ferrari <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dave knew how to make them. Yeah, that's some high end shit right there. Yeah. Do Ferrari or get that uh what is that that white pearl from uh Audi? That's a sexy fucking paint. Fucking twenty six hundred dollars a quart. <laughs> pearl white is not is not cheap because if you get a real true pearl white, yep. there's actually crushed pearl in it. Yeah. Um that, that's the stuff that Audi sells. I love that. Out there that that they use a synthetic pearl. Yeah. Oh, the Ferrari dark blue, or what's the what's the color that Mike hates? Who's that guy? Mike hates it. Uh, it's named after a city in California. Uh, excuse me. Um, Chip Foos does it. Ventura blue. Oh God. That dude. That's dude. That blue. Uh, you know, guy. here's the worst I, part: is you said Mike hates this guy. I know. I Mike hates of all the people that I hate. No, if it's going to be any color from the Ferrari, it's going to be the OG Ferrari red. Oh, I yeah. have to agree. I, I, I'm a Ferrari red kind of guy. I mean, if it's if it's going to see, be I'm not a red person. Guy. I never have been. I've always been. I like the dark blues, the Ferrari dark blue, uh, the the fucking Ventura blue or whatever he calls it, um, from Chip Foose's line. <laughs> now, I will tell you one thing. Since these these mods are all fully machinable. What do they call it? Shaker mean, orange? Oh, no, that's the Mopar orange. So these essentially could be done in aluminum and anodized Ferrari red 
or powder coated Ferrari red. You know I'm telling you right now, if you do it anodized, you have to do one color. Mopar plum crazy. Plum crazy purple? Oh, hell yes. Hell yes. The original plum crazy purple. Dude. I do like plum crazy purple. Who doesn't? I also like I also like the midnight purple with the prism flake. Yeah. Yes. There was there was we we've, we've had it on the table to do aluminum. We've done one trucker so far. I've looked at doing a second trucker. I have the body here already. Um, yeah. What already, happened to that aluminum trucker? Huh? What happened to that aluminum trucker? Well, um, right you now I did the wrong color. Larry, <laughs> Larry, my builder, has one. Um, the other one is still sitting in my in my build box over there, waiting to decide what I'm going to do with it. <clears throat> the biggest issue that we had is is getting a good drill bit. Because we have to pre-drill for the screw holes for the board to mount. And next to drilling and tapping, I don't use a, a tappable. We use a self-tapping screw, normally in the PA-12 or the stab woods. Mm. But the hole is so tiny that drilling and tapping that with a hand drill is not, not the nicest thing in the world. Yeah. So... But if he has it on the machine, though, he could easily uh, drill it, uh, the screw holes. Correct. He could do it on the, on the bridge port when he has it there. Um, but we would have to have precise, exact locations. Yeah. Then drilled and tapped. You need to make a template. Well, with if the he drilled the holes, then this way he can, drawing. then he can, like, uh, put the template in there. Of the of the chip, and then <coughs> excuse me. And, well, you uh, know, you know. we have that. I've been showing two D drawings. Yeah. If I was to put the screw holes in those exact spots, it could be done. Yeah, I'm sure it can. Yeah. I mean, because you know, I mean, well, you know, when I do my models, I have my holes already in the model, and I always match up. You know what I'm saying? It always matches up uh, when when I put my uh, you know boards in inside the the mods. Right. And when you get your prints, they've got screw holes in them. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I just See, it's like always, just a little pilot hole. It's a you know uh, it's a one and a half millimeter pilot hole. Right. So normally what we do is we set the board down in there. I have a drill and a drill bit, and we run it straight in, straight in, straight in. Run yeah. the screws in, we're done. No, I just drop my board. I put the screws on the board, drop it in. When it aligns up, screw it right down, and I'm done. You know? But, I mean, it, so far, it, it worked. I mean, it works. So, but now I'm just, I, right now I'm just doing a, 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 I have already two mods with, and, you know, obviously you've seen this, Mike, but uh, yeah. with sled systems. So I'm trying to make everything like uh, all the board and everything like on a sled. And then just way it slides right into the mod, you know. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to design ahead of time a mod that could also be CNC'd. Because we already been through this, Mike, you know, with the with the with the anchorage. And right. the, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to redesign the tomorrow to hold the same shape, but on the inside, I want to try to make it to where it can be CNC'd because I want to try to get these guys made in either dollar or aluminum. I already found the source, so it's going to happen sooner or later. So, but, uh, right, and that's where which, I always, most of my designs, um, I mean, like take the Empire, for example. The Empire was designed to be machined out of stab wood on my machine 100%. That is the whole design behind the, the Empire and why we designed it. Now, I do want to make some variation changes that I see, um, but for the most part, it is designed strictly to be machined. And that's because I know which way the bit goes in. I know right. what happens in the corners. I know, you know, I know what uh, the machine capabilities are. I will be 100% honest with you. When I showed him this mod, and we were joking about it, and I go, it'd be, it'd be awesome if you could machine that for me. And he looks at me, and he goes, well, I can. And I looked at it, and I go, how the fuck are you going to machine that? 
there's spots in here that I couldn't get a machine into. And he's manually ma managed to figure it out. And, and, and it's like, holy shit. I don't understand how the fuck you did that. Literally. Yeah, well, well, you're a modern, he's a they know how to use this stuff. You know, that's why. Well, here's the, here's the prime example. Okay. A bit comes off the machine straight down. He's doing these on a manual bridge port. You see right up here on the top, there's an actual slot in there that goes across for the wire for a wire to sit in. Okay. And it's a straight even slot. Literally, the only way I could figure out to do it is to drill through the bottom, put a hole there, slot it. He managed to do it, and I don't know how he did it. And I was a machinist for a while. That's why I, I know the capabilities and, and what it needs to be done. I ran bridge ports. I ran, you know, uh, grinders and stuff like that for years. He's been doing it for about 30 of them. So he does know his way around shit. But the shit he was able to do on this, I, I, I have to ask, dude, how the fuck did you do that? I, it's got me puzzled. I still got to get together with Kenny, though. We got to make something happen. He does a phenomenal fucking job. Now, granted, I am trying to make the um, composer all in-house, and it's it's nothing about Ken. Ken, Ken is tied up with, with his other projects because Ken actually owns... I've showed you before the paintball business, paintball yeah. guns. He machines paintball guns in his shop. That's his biggest business. He does these on the side for me to help me out and, and of course, make some extra dollars. And, and I've got him pretty tied up for the time that he spends working on the Widowmakers. I would rather have him either working on his paintball guns or Widowmakers, whereas if I can do the composer in-house, it saves me trouble as well. And happen to wait on them. Because I can make them right to order. You know what I mean? No, I know. I still like, I my, I mean, my thing is, uh, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting to the point with the, with the designing that I just want to get a mod of mine milled. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I definitely want to get to that point because I, I, I just want to see, you know, like, I know that you and I were working on the anchorage of getting that CNC for, to make it stab wood, but we would still need that bar made in metal which i mean i think can be done i mean i don't know but i think it can be done you know right so that's the biggest thing with me is i'm never gonna stop making the 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 printable mods as so to speak they're generally the affordable ones but like i was talking to you the other day dom about we're changing how we're doing things here from now on um we're yeah. going to start building 10, 15 Widowmakers, however I feel like making them. We're going to put them up on the on the Facebook group and sell them. Then we'll do a small drop for customized ones, for people that want something specific and unique. That way, I'm not building up a heavy batch of stock. Right, because if I sit here and I spend a month building 15 or 20 mods just the way I feel like making them, I can get that done. When I put them out, people can have them right then and there. But now you get five or six guys that want customs. Well, okay, well, then that's five or six that I got to worry about. And I can get them batched up, wrapped up, and shipped out a lot faster because everybody else is happy with what the ones that we pre-sold anyway. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that way I can spend more time working on machinable products because – I personally think a machinable product is a gorgeous piece of art. Um, I'm not a big fan of Delrin. I will tell everybody that. I will say it lasers fucking beautiful. The laser ability on, on Delrin is, is glorious. Um, but at the end of the day, I just ain't a fan of Delrin, the material itself. And it's a personal opinion. Yeah, because I love it. I love the way it feels when, it, especially if it's polished properly, and I mean, it's just so smooth. I I, I love it. I don't know why. I just do. I, I my problem is is it's too soft. 
It's a softer material. Yeah, I know. Well, you be gentle. That's but then again, soft, it does take impact. So just got to learn how to be gentle. Well, you seen what I did to my stab wood mod, so. Yeah, you fucking fling them across the room. It's sitting up there somewhere repaired. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, so I want to stick with the more machinable stuff. Now, like the aluminum ones and stuff like that, you know, people have to understand just because you can go buy a China mod that's done in aluminum doesn't make it a nice mod, obviously. But when we do aluminum stuff, they're all still hand machined. They're all done one at a time, one offs. Um, and all machine stuff is. Um, Mercarda, Toasty, I, I do like Mercarda. Some of it. Um, I, I am a fan of the G10 style. G10 carbon fiber, which is essentially almost the same thing as Mercarda. Um, kind of, except for Mercarda. Real Mercarda is millions and millions of t-shirts and sweatshirts and rags all shredded up and then pressed into layers and then pressed again. They press a layer out of it with a resin. Once it hardens, they put another layer on it. They press it. They harden it. They put another layer down. They press it. They harden it. And that's all Mercarda is, is just destroyed fabric. <coughs> but it's casted in a resin. So it makes it nice and hard. So Mercarda is kind of nice, and it does give it a lot of durability with the fabrics in there. I'm just not a biggest fan of the color change of Mercarda. The different colors of the layers. I guess. Mm. I, I agree, Toasty. There is. What is that? Way more ugly than, than beautiful, though. Have a good one, Wayne. Take it easy, brother. So, that's my biggest thing is, is I'm working on Stuff that I can do in house and more machinable based mods is, is my main goal because I think a machinable mod is even higher quality. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, you know, also the feel of it is a little different. But you're going to pay for it in the end, too. I mean, the harder it is to make, the more work it's going to cost more. But it's even a better product. And, and, and my biggest thing is, is my main goal is to constantly keep advancing the products that we make, even the handmade stuff. You know, we want to keep up in the quality of the product and making a better and better product because I'm just going to say, I would hate to have my site filled with mods that people have dropped and busted. That, that's one thing I've always strived on. And we don't have that, which I am very, you know, thankful for. That there's not a ton of mods out there that are shattered, so to speak. And that just shows that we are doing what we do correctly. And Dom, that's why we work together with everything. You know, we like to catch each other's flaws. Yeah, well, we try. I mean, we try. I and, mean, you know, we're always trying to build something that's durable. And sometimes it, it backfires on us because I see other other stuff that's being put on. It's like, fuck. You know? There's a lot of mods out there that have a whole lot of hype and a whole lot of credibility. You know? And it ain't a tenth of the quality. And I'm going to put that out. I'm going to say it. it. It The quality doesn't compare. But people love the builder and the name has hype. And and it, it's sad how how hype can sell products. Yeah, I mean, you know, it wouldn't even be. I wouldn't even care about the hype as long as the mod is good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you talk about like somebody like Victor. I'm sorry, this is fucking great. And I took this thing apart, and I was like, yeah. wow. I mean, I mean, there's you can tell there's a lot of ingenuity and a lot of love that went in it. You know, if if people that have one and know what's inside it's like he did a fantastic job so you got to give credit where credit is due i i agree 100 but uh you know it's not always that way so 
Well, I, I, I take it, look back, okay? Now, and, and, and I may get flack for saying what I'm about to say. And don't get me wrong. What I'm about Tom, to say Tom, is he's trying to get you to show that mod off on camera. <laughs> to deuce. Toasty was trying to show up, get you he to show off that. that. Um, what I'm about to say may, may rub people wrong. Some people may agree. Okay. I come from the day where the high ends were kitchen yeah. sinks. Hold on. Hold on. Can you see that? The rhino. Oh, that was nice that he put your name on it. He did. <laughs> I was like, wow, that was nice. He goes, I hope you don't mind. I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> um, you know, high-end mods were stuff like Geppettos, kitchen sinks, blacknesses, you know. See, that was me. The masters. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, I love I'm, I, That's another one. Uh, another one I'm going to try to get one day. A Loch Ness? No, oh. Guild of Masters. The Guild oh, of yeah. Masters. Yeah, I know that one. Um, now, I, I like the Loch Ness, the original Loch Ness, not that China-made shit. Yes. Yeah, the so, original. But if you look at these mods, and I've owned like I've owned the Galaxy Centrinos. Thank you, Toasty. Which was the Hemo number nine. Actually, I've owned two Galaxy Centrinoses. I've owned the the VA uh, Ra mod. I've owned the Soruses, which were considered high end mods of their time. And and that's looking at those mods is what I strive for my quality to be when it comes to my stab wood stuff. Oh hell yeah. You know, now I'm going to tell you that mod that he has, I think st is a step above half the Geppettos I've seen. What, the Seduce? Yes. Oh, yeah. I like how he brought in the polished metal. It's where you never really, if you got that out of a Geppetto, you know, six years ago, you got that on a faceplate. Or a beauty ring around the button, which was a MyTech switch anyway. Um, don't get me wrong, those were gorgeous mods and I loved them. Prime example. These things were a freaking mint back in the day. Yep. But now I look at this and I look at it and go, what the fuck's so special about it? This is an M axis M axis M17. What the fuck is so special about this? Yeah. Nothing. I mean, they got a metal faceplate. I'm doing metal faceplates, and I'm engraving them. So, you know, it's... You take everything... It, it is a lot of work on that seduce. I mean, and the best part is, like, you know, you get, like, you know, a couple extra buttons, different styles. You get the, yep. Uh, yep. the different type of uh, ring sets, different inserts. I the mean, way his finish is done... It's it, he put so many layers of polish on oh, that thing, and there is I, not. It looks like you can reach into it. It looks like someone just coated it with oil. I mean, yeah, I I, it's like I said, it's it's like no flaws at all. No, I mean, I, you know, except for my fingerprints, of course. But right, no, I I, I, I give I give that maker. Okay, so I see Geppetto's going for that's a high end mod. $1,500, $2,000, okay? What I see in that Seduce is, is I see that being a $800, $900 to $1,000 product. Oh, yeah. Even his Voyeur Squonk was nice. Now, I don't know if it's all hand done or if there's a lot of machine work because you can do some beautiful shit with a machine. Oh, yeah. So, but at the end of the day, it's a beautiful piece. Yep. It is. And you know what? There's no argument. That is high end. That's the way it should be done. When I think high end, that's one of the mods I think about. I mean, and that's the thing is, is I think of Lochnesses, kitchen sinks, and Geppettos. But it's the era sinks, of when you got into vaping. Yeah. I, I mean, people are stepping up their game. I remember when uh, Vape and Archi Architect came out and VA was doing the Alumide mods and everybody was like, oh my God, freaking out. They were charging 200 bucks for a 3D printed Alumide box. <laughs> you know, it was well, like- Well, it was new. So, I mean, you know, listen, 
Yeah, Wade, absolutely. Wade Architect is also the ones that did all the stab wood rods, I think. Didn't oh, they do yeah, the, the, the rods? Yeah, we're heading there, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always wanted a wood arm rod as well. That's the black snakeskin one, black and red snakeskin. Dude, that thing was so sexy. But I, I think an alumite mod He's is got a floral box too. coming out. What yeah, but Victor, Victor Firmino, he's got a borrow device coming out. Yeah, but it's going to be so fucking high priced. I mean, granted, it's probably going to be beautiful, but yeah, he showed up. Oh, people with money like to that. burn can buy. Yeah, that's the GNX. I never heard of those. Uh, that guy, Terry. And and that's my thing is is I try to make high end mods for the affordable community. Yeah, All right. they, get, they can get pricey, but you know what block we didn't do, Dominic? What? We never made that fucking uh, Amboynia wood. I never yeah, made I the Amboynia wood. I know. I, I, be, I told you I wanted a piece of that, but you got so much fucking shit. You know, I'm not even getting a trucker on time, for crying out loud. I'm working on it. That a lot, a lot of the the, the, the machine mods are going to start getting worked on this week and the next. But it is a lot more work. It's a ton more work. Yep. Miami Vice blocks made. <laughs> oh, yep, that's right there. <laughs> oh man. But, that thing, uh, I'm going to tell you. Once this thing's cleared. I think this thing's going to be gorgeous. Wow, that is a work of beauty right there. I've got that a block in there right mod. now that did the same pink. I did the same pink, but I did it with purple. Hmm. But I got All right, a, I so guys, listen, we hit we hit the hour mark, and... Uh, Cause I got a, uh, I you know shit. I just batched up a bunch of juice, and uh, I gotta stop packing that bitch right up. But uh, we're gonna give a, a chance to uh, Chris to do his outro, and then uh, I got a little surprise for you all. There's not a lot of people on here, so this will be a really good one. You guys don't want to miss out on this one. Go ahead, Chris. BBC. All right, guys. Uh if you guys like higher end coals with a punch and a bunch of flavor, yeah. you can check me out at www.homeboycoals.com. Uh, Caitlin posted a link to my Facebook group in there. Definitely worth checking out. Lots of cool stuff we're doing. Waffles and buys like the Ellie's. So, yeah, check it out, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all. Right on. Thanks, thank you to our guest, Homeboy Chris. Uh, Echoing so, like that. I don't know how many of you have seen the the post. I had some uh, lemon parfait that I had put in a little uh, oak barrel that I had made a couple of runs of bourbon in it, and um, I just wanted to give it a shot. So I filtered it and everything, and I got just just about a liter and a half left out of the two liters because most of it evaporated. So. Uh, it does. Uh, the, the mod that you're waiting on, the tomorrow, Mitch. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get, it's gonna drop soon. We got everything is ready. We're just waiting on the top nuts. We have to go from this guy in copper to this guy in silver. That's what we're waiting on because I'm not gonna short myself and, and I just want to try to do the best that I can. So I'm getting all the top of nuts silver plated, and that's what's been taking this whole fucking time. I know Chris Nossler is in here. He's waiting on a vape chola. Tim Stone is waiting on a vape chola. Uh, Joseph Tristan is waiting on a vape chola. And, yes, it has taken longer than expected, but I'm sorry. I just refuse. I'd rather give everybody their money back than put junk out there because I'm not going to do that. I just want it. I want it done, and I want it done right. So... Anyway, so the lemon parfait, the lemon bourbon parfait uh, is going to come in these little 
models like this. It's obviously it's a limited batch. I did put a post up and there's like over 90 X ones. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like the first ones that are going to do it. I said that I was going to put up a post, uh, of actually when they're all ready. And, uh, uh, when it's ready, I'm gonna I'm gonna announce how many bottles I have and uh, the price, and that's what's that's what's gonna go out there. But this is what it's gonna be looking like. It'll come in a nice gift box like that. So this is it right here. So this is what I want to do for a giveaway. So this will be one lucky winner right here. All right. So it'll be the lemon bourbon uh, parfait. So we'll uh, we'll start this up. So for all of you that left and missed it, you guys are the lucky ones. So uh, let me just pick a number. It's going to be one through a hundred. Throw it in the chat. And I'll help you watch. Yeah. All right, got the number down. Let's see. All right, so after the start, we'll go. All right. It always amazes me to see how quick everybody types this in. All right, stop. I saw Frank Rizzo. Frank Rizzo, Frank Rizzo got it. Which is Richard Rodriguez. Richard yeah, Rodriguez. Richard. Holy shit. You got the bourbon lemon parfait. And a nice little gift box. So let me just put that on the side for you. There we go. All right. Congratulations. Congrats. That's an awesome win because it is only limited. So uh, I did already put another batch in it, and I think it was on the 21st uh, when I took the other one out and filtered it. So hopefully we'll get another nice little uh, batch going on that one. I would love to get a second barrel because I want to try the Rice Krispies like that as well. But anyway, you're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. You guess the number, you got it. Awesome. I'll get it to you, my friend. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for coming. We'll see you next week on Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, um, Matt, yes. <laughs> we got we got Dom drinking bourbon. Yeah, oh, I made my own bourbon, bro. Shit is fucking fire. <laughs> I put the, uh, the Zoom link in the uh, chat, too. Oh, yeah. I love my bourbon. It's good. It's yes. good. But anyway, guys, thank you very much. Uh, you guys are welcome to join in the Zoom <laughs> later on. Uh, Mike's got the link up. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Keep on vaping. And stay off those thinkies. Yes. Peace out, guys. <laughs>